What's going on guys? This is Web Dev Journey and welcome back to a brand new video. And honestly guys, this is going to be the very last video for this series. I do need a place to stop because with this project, you can keep on going and going and going. It, it could never stop, right? Well, eventually you'll find a place to stop and start uh, refactoring. But uh, yeah, anyways, we're going to just stop at right here because we did all of the hard stuff, which was, was just basically clear cache and... Um, uploading an image those that's what that's what that, that's what was the most difficult part about all this project right so what we're going to be doing what we're going to be doing in this pro in this uh, video is just refactoring a little bit our code that is it um so i wanted to start off with our tweet page now remember in our tweet page uh when you hit a profile right and you hit a certain tweet you get all this data, right? And some of this data you don't really need. So basically, let's just go over it. So right right on top on, on the tweet, the tweet, the parent tweet, we have all this stuff, right? Which is basically things that we actually do need, maybe, right? But if we actually go inside like uh, creator, we actually cleaned up creator, right? But let's go inside comments. Comments is somewhere we did not... Uh, we did not clean up. So inside comments, let's go inside the first array. We got the comment, we got the created app, we got the creator, which is good, but inside the creator, we get all this crap again, which we really don't need. All we need from the creator is the email and name, right? We also have liked, we also have tweet and updated app. Maybe we don't need that updated app. Maybe we could get rid of that. So that's what we're going to be doing. So let me actually show you how to clean up this particular spot where we're inside of comments and we want to clean up the creator field right and as you can see we've already populated it so you could you could basically uh kind of figure out where that is so let's go into our code and here's a place where we actually need to make the updates right and like i said we've already populated a lot of these things like inside of the comments the path comments we populated the path creator and also inside of creator, we actually populated a comments created, which I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think, I don't think we really need this right for our profile or for that tweet page. So I'm actually going to get rid of this. So control save. Now, if you go back over here, refresh the page inside of tweet comments, right? Comments. Cre what was it? Oh, creator comments creator. We, we, we got, we get that stuff. Okay. So like I said, we want to clean up what's inside creator. We only want the name and the email and probably created at. No, we don't even want that. We only want the name and email. That's all we want. Right? So that, it's very, very simple. Okay. So inside of here where we said path creator, we could literally add a property called select. And this is all the things. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Select, God damn it, select. And this is all the things that we want from this path creator, which is basically, again, name and email. So let me copy this, paste this sucker in here, control save, and let's go back over here and, you know, refresh the page. Let's see what we get. So we go back in data, we go to data, tweet, comments, let's go inside of creator. And you're gonna see that we only have the email and name, which is good. This is actually very, very good. We don't need anything else, just the email and name. And let's say that inside of comments as well, inside of the comments, we don't need this updated app, right? We need everything else. We need all this stuff, but we do not need the updated app. Let me actually show you how to do that, all right? <laughs> and it's very, very simple. Let's, let's go back to the code. So in the code, we have this path uh, right here for creator, right? We actually had to go to the path where it says comments right here, because this is where we want to exclude that updated at, right? So you might be thinking, okay, all we have to do is put a select, right? And put an array and just name out everything that we need, which is basically what comment created at creator light tweet. <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> there's actually one simple way we could actually undo or exclude updated at right so let's actually go in the code so instead of the array since we only want to get rid of one thing i'm actually add one string 
and I'm going to do a minus. This minus is going to tell Mongoose, hey, we want to exclude whatever is going to be right here, which is the updated at. We want to exclude the updated at. Now, we could actually exclude uh, multiple things, like I said. And yes, you would have to do an array if you want to do multiple things. But since we only want to exclude one thing, we could just literally just pass in the string and then do uh, minus, which is the uh, uh, to exclude and update it at. So let's control save this and let's take a look at our new uh, data. So inside of data, tweet, comments, look at the comments. We don't have that updated property anymore, which is fantastic. Like I said, you could actually undo a lot of things. Let's actually get rid of, um, let's get rid of the comment itself, which, which is one thing that we actually need, but just to make sure that, uh, we could actually do it. This does have to be wrapped inside an array and we're going to exclude minus comment as well. Control save that. Let's go back, refresh the page data, tweet comments. And look at that. We don't have that comment no more, which is a pretty nice shortcut for excluding things. Let's actually undo that because we actually, that's one thing we do need. So let's get rid of all that stuff. Okay. So I'm just showing you how to clean up data or when you actually do populate, clean up the stuff that you actually do need or do not need and just, you know, clean that up. So that way you know how to do it. And there you go. That's how you clean up. Mongoose, like I said, makes it very, very simple. If you were doing this just straight up no SQL syntax, this would be a nightmare. This would actually be very, very difficult. Not difficult. It's, it's just nothing in programming is very difficult. It's just very tedious to do. Okay. I, that's my opinion. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Nothing in programming is hard. It's just very, very tedious. Some things are extremely tedious and you just don't want to do it. So anyways, now that I showed you how to clean up uh, our, uh, the populate method or things that we send to the front end, let's go back into the front end and start cleaning up some things there. And you might be wondering, what are we going to clean up there? Well, let me actually show you. Let me actually go to the tweet page. Okay. So when we tweet something and if we do not have an image submit, we're going to get an error because we're expecting to have an image. We get errors saying that, Hey, uh, we couldn't, we couldn't do anything cause you don't have an image. We couldn't put anything in there cause you don't have an image. So we need an image. So that way we could put stuff. Sometimes our tweets do not come in images with images. So this is one thing we do want to clear up. And this is a very, very simple, uh, fix. So let's go back to our code. And this is going to be in the client side. Cause in the client side, we did specify where is it at? In our services, our API service, this is where we specify that, hey, uh, we're actually grabbing an image and, you know, return everything with the image. So this is very simple. Like I said, we, we could just say if there is an image, then you want to do all. Let's, let's do all of this, right? Let's do all this part right here, which is pretty uh, easy, right? If there isn't an image, well, all we want to do is return everything except for the image, just the message. Oops, get rid of that. Control save this. And I'm waiting, if, I'm waiting for it to compile. All right, there it is. All right, so let's, let's go back to our site and let's try to do a image. Uh, what is this? Oh, it's for a PNG, right? Cause I've been messing around and eh, don't worry about that. Anyways, so let's uh, let me go to console. Let's tweet something, and this is going to be with out an image, and this should work. So if we submit this, there you go. It actually posted it. Let's refresh the page, and there you go, without an image. So now we could do it with and without images. Let me, let me actually do it one more time with an image. Let's choose a file, dude. Uh, submit. And if we refresh this, there you go, man, I, I really need to inspect this and, you know, make that image. Good God. Make that image. What is it with? Let me see. Uh, 20%. Wait, that's pretty nice. Right. We could do 50%. So this is, this is CSS. This is playing around with CSS. Let me actually add that. Cause. I know that's going to be very hectic every time we add an image. Uh, so let's go to styles. 
let's go to card and where is that image okay I forgot where it was um items card content okay so let me, let me actually go back to the here it is items card content and inside of this we have the image and we're gonna just say what is it with 50% that's what we said control save this now if you go back refresh page yep there it is all right awesome all right the other thing that I want to fix is that let's have a little preview a preview on choose a file you know when you choose an actual file open up I want to have a preview of that image that would be something very nice right and believe it or not this is actually very very simple I say simple because I already know how to do it, but for mo most people, they might not know. But it, literally, this is just, I don't even know, probably four lines of code. That is it. So let's actually try to do that. And that's, like I said, it's going to be in the front end. So let's get rid of all these things. And we're going to actually do that in the components in the tweet form. This is where, you know, we have our form and we can select the image that we want. And this is where we want to display the image. So first of all, what I'm going to be doing is underneath the text area, this is where I want the image or the preview of the image to be. So we're going to create a IMG tag and we're going to just leave it. We're going to actually, now we're going to leave it alone for right now, but just know that we are going to have an IMG tag and we're going to be populating the SRC with something. Okay. All right. Next thing I want to do is that once they hit that file or once they on change, we don't want to just set the image no more. We actually want to render out a, uh, or have a function that handles this on change. So up here, what we're going to be creating is another function. We're going to call it, I don't know, let's call it read file. Cause technically a image is a file. So we're going to set that equal to, and have the event in there as well. And bada beam, bada boom. So this is where we're going to set the image. Let me actually grab this. We're going to set the image right in here and let me actually get rid of this. And we're not long, no longer going to do that. We're going to read. We're going to let read file do everything for us. All right. So this, this hasn't changed anything basically, right? We're basically doing the same thing, but instead of just doing it in here, we're actually doing it up here. The thing that comes in is that we're going to create another state. And we're going to call this, I'm going to call it a uh, pre image. So short for preview, I guess. I don't know, man. Pre image, just like so. And what we're going to be doing is saving a, I'm going to say URL because this is, it, it really is a URL, but a local host URL. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So down below, since once we set the image, what we're going to be doing is, is actually going to be the same thing. It's going to set pre image, right? But let me actually copy this. And we're going to be using a pre built module once again, with JavaScript. Okay, and this is called URL dot create object URL. Alright, so as we know, this image is a object, it's an object, it actually passes in as an object, which is something that we do not want if we want to preview it, what we need to do to preview it is actually, you know, have that local host slash whatever, uh, the image, you know, we actually need to have a URL to actually display that image. And this pre-built module right here actually does that for us. We don't even have to worry about that. Let, let, I'm gonna actually show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So all we're doing is creating a URL for this file that we have or that we passed in, which is our image, right? And we're actually saving it in the pre image. And like I said, this is a URL. So what I'm going to do here is actually not quotes, pass in the pre image. And obviously you always want an alt and we're going to just say image. If you control save this, check this out. It's very, very cool. Okay. And we're going to, we're going to take a look at it very quickly. So if I actually choose a file, let's uh, choose. I don't know this and yeah, just, just because how the things work right here. Look at this. I'm going to, I'm going to say position absolute, um, with 30%, uh, top, I don't know, 
there it is. There's the image. Check that out. You could actually view it, right? Display our or uh, preview our image. But check that out. Check the, check the uh, there it is right here. Look at this. It creates a URL for us. Like I said, it does have it in our local host 3000 and it just creates a simple URL. This is, this is not saved anywhere. It's just in memory. So once you refresh the page, this is gone. Okay. But it creates a unique URL for this image. And that's very, very cool. We could actually use that URL to, you know, display that uh, image that we have right here. We haven't saved it yet. It's just a preview of that image. As you can see right here, blob, which is our file, which is everything that we know of. If you know, if you, have you ever like messed around with images and the binary and whatever, they're actually called blobs. Um, but it creates a URL, like I said, and it's very, very cool. It's very, very handy. I'm going to just say that it's extremely handy. And you can actually say, Hey, whatever. Hey, this, this is a blob that was made into an URL and I misspoke that, but let's submit this. We submit it. Cool. Refresh the page and check it out. Boom. Pretty awesome. Right? But the thing is now you could display images and it's going to display it somewhere else because the way I have this, but anyways, it's there. And guys, that was it for this video. Literally, that was it. We finished the Twitter uh, clone. Uh, I'm not gonna say we're we're 100 there. I don't even think we're 30. percent I must okay. I'm gonna just say we're probably 30. percent Man, that's. I don't know if I'm being cocky at that point, saying 30. percent But anyways, we're, we have you know a good base point. I'm gonna put it that way. A good base of a Twitter clone which is good, right? We could go to the home page, which will display every user's tweets, a profile, which is our own tweets. We could actually tweet something. We could go to the specific tweet and see all the comments. Um, we could comment some stuff if we wanted to. It's everything's very, very cool and uh, pretty. I'm not going to say up to date, but you could do things that you could do with Twitter. Dude, I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. I'm super tired. I've been tired. I've been saying that for the last videos. I really am guys. I really am. But anyways, guys, let me just recap the things that I've done in this video. All we did was clean up our tweet page, the information that we actually get inside of our tweet page, right? So we no longer have inside of comments. We have all the things we need, but inside of a creator, we only have the email and name. But remember, once you start liking some stuff that liked is going to have a lot of information or data that you probably don't need. So now you know exactly how to, uh, you know, refactor that liked, uh, property. So that way you only get data that you want. So that's one thing we did. We also, uh, fixed the, when you actually tweet, didn't have an image. Um, yeah, if you didn't have an image, you could, you couldn't submit, but now we fixed that. And now we have a way to preview our images in this file or in this form. Once we actually choose a file, we could preview an image, right? Which is something that a lot of people don't really do, or I don't see that many people talk about it in the, you know, in videos, but I want to do that because that's something that's a very cool, unique user experience that people, a lot of people want. Okay. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, please, please let me know down in the comments what you've learned in this, in this series, man. Uh, this is, like I said, this is more of, of a, I'm gonna say advanced intermediate advanced or just advanced. I don't know, but this is up there. Okay. Um, we did a, cover a lot of things in here. So let me know down in the comments what you've learned or what you want me to do. Like I said, this is the last video. If you actually want me to cover something else in this video, let me know down in the comments, like this video. If you learned something and hit that subscribe button to support me. Also guys, I do appreciate you guys watching my videos. It does mean a lot to me. It really does. So thank you guys for watching my video, sticking to me, sticking by my side or sticking to my videos at least. And yeah, I just can't thank you enough, guys. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video or series, whatever I decide to do. Thank you, guys, and bye.